Uh, good morning from Fort Wilderness, the campground down here at Disney, in Florida. And I was underneath here just looking around. I was going to, I was thinking about spraying my these nylon slides with you know RV that slide loop just to keep everything in good working order. But while I was poking my head around here, I noticed I saw an oily residue, and I thought, well, that's not good. That shouldn't be there. I've never saw it before. So I got to pull them back to the wire loom, and I noticed up here, I've got a busted line. So you can see it's bubbled up and popped. And this is my high pressure line. I guess whether it's all pretty well high pressure, but this is, it's kind of unique. It's a small, it's one eighth line. Um, so my first thought, oh, I'll just go down here and nap get a line made up. Then I got to reading about that. Mm, you really, can't do that. You gotta be careful about what kind of line you get. But well, first of all, let's back up. I say the line was broken. I said, okay, I gotta find out where it goes and how long it is. So I follow the wire loom, and it's you got this big mess. It just goes back and forth, back and forth, wad and wad and wad. But it stops right here. So it goes from here to here. You know, what five, four or five feet. But instead of having a four or five foot hole, this is a hundred and seventy-two inch line. And after doing some reading in the, 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 the manual, the reason they do that is because both lines have to be at the identical length. Because you know, this line is what, can, there you can see the cylinder back, back through there. This is the forward cylinder, which push, op push opens and closes the, um, the passenger side slide behind the passenger uh, seat. So that's a... Uh, that's the forward cylinder, and way down there is the rear cylinder. So the rear cylinder evidently has to have 171 inch hose. The rear cylinder, here's, here's the hose, the, the connection, and it goes way down there and connects. So both hoses have to be the same length to keep the room, keep the cylinders moving out at the same rate. And that's why you got this big ball of, of, of extra hose here, because they have to be equal. So that so was something I learned. Uh, something else I learned about was the equalization cylinder. A little bit about how that works. If you're, because you know, underneath here, there's a, there's a, there's a, there, there it is. There's a shaft right there, and the room is is extended now. But as it retracts, this shaft will also stick out here another foot or two. And this, what the equal was equalization cylinder's job is, is to make sure that the fluid going to the forward and the rear cylinder is both the same amount. Because like evidently in hydraulics it can be kind of tricky to get uh, when you got two cylinders pushing on an object, you know, making sure it, it doesn't rack. Like the, the room goes sideways in the hole. That's, I think that's called racking. And it, everything gets jammed up. So you got to do something to make sure both cylinders move at the same rate regardless of load. So, because you may have something heavier on one side and they cause it to bind up <coughs> or, or require more pressure. But with the equalization cylinder, that takes care of that because you got your input line here. This comes right off the pump. That's probably coming in about 3,000 PSI or so. But once it gets into this cylinder, and there's like there's two pistons in here, the two separate chambers, and it fills those up. So once it starts moving, it makes sure, you know, if there's, you know, maybe five ounces of fluid will go out this line, five ounces of fluid will go out this line, ensuring both cylinders move at the same rate. So that's what I found out. I also found out about these lines uh, that, you know, they got a part number on them and they're made by, I think they're mostly made by Parker. But, uh, that's uh, one of the major line companies that they use. And it's one eighth in diameter and also it's, um, it's not braided like some lines. Some lines are real heavy uh, and they're braided and they have you know virtually no give to them but with HWH th this is actually a plastic line and they want it to have uh, a little bit of give they want it to be able to expand so that when we push our rooms out and it's a cold day and it heats up pressure changes fluids going to expand your room may creep in or creep out you know so that's why they want you to make sure you use the proper line you have to use what's called swedge fittings don't use crimp ons on, crimpons won't handle the pressure. They've they got to be rated for over 6,000 PSI. So 
this is Sunday afternoon, so tomorrow I'll make some phone calls, try to find me a Parker distributor, see if someone can can make me this line in, uh, while I'm down here in Orlando. If not, I'll have to order one, but hopefully someone can can will have the correct line in stock and I can get it all made up. So I'll follow up with that information. So I guess that's all I know at this point. So. I'll make some phone calls and see if I can't get this line changed out. Well, we'll back under the RV today. Got my new cable in, and where did I get the? I'll point this out to you. If you ever need HWH parts, go right here. Stewart Service. There's his number and everything. Uh, he's in Indiana. Sometimes it can be difficult to get through to HWH and get anything ordered and get it shipped out, but uh, he makes these cables, um, whatever length you need. So uh, I got, got that uh, within two days uh, for, well, from Indiana to Kentucky. So that worked out good for me. Um, and I just took this line loose, and it was under quite a bit of pressure. Um, and I tried to relieve some of the pressure by, for, you know, normally when you bring in a room, you, you bring it in and then ho hold the button till you hear your pump of labor. And that way you pressurize and the cylinder gets equalized because this is your equalization cylinder. It keeps both. This is your equal, equalization cylinder here. Of course, you got this big long ram. There's a big long ram here that pushes the room out. And you got another one way at the other end, just like it. So you have to have this equalization cylinder to keep the volume of fluid identical going out, going out to, as both rams push out. Otherwise, the room would jack sideways and cause you all kinds of trouble but I, I tried to release some of the pressure just by you know bumping it back just a little bit and but it was still under a, a good amount of pressure when I broke the line loose so be prepared for that you'll get a spray of hydraulic fluid protect your eyes and so you don't get a surprise by that but but now the pressure is off and I can take the line loose and you know I got me paying here very little came out you know of course there's a big long line so so you, you have to check your oil level once you're done and, and make sure you replenish it back to where it needs to be. And I notice I'm going to have to be delicate up here because see this is where that line comes off. And, um, and it's on this real small line on the back side. So you want to be careful that you hold this extremely tight when you break this line loose because you don't want to damage this small line here break it or kink it in any way so I'll get that loose and I'm gonna just just to make sure I'm going to um, roll both of these old line and the new line out make sure they are the same length because they need to be just to double check and then I'll get that in here and I, I got a plan for bleeding it I think what I'm, my ideal is because there'll be quite a bit of air in there and I don't know how these systems act as far as getting air out of it I'm going to put my new line in, I'm going to connect it here, I'll tighten this fitting, but I will leave this fitting loose because this line will be pressurized as I bring the room back in. So that way I'll bump it, I'll leave it loose, I'll bump it until I see oil come out. As soon as I see oil come out, I know that I've pushed the majority of the air out and I don't have to worry about having a whole line full of air being shoved down on those cylinders. And worry about working itself out. So I'll get back to it and I'll see how it goes. Okay, my new line is installed and um, I'm fixing to bump the hydraulic uh, system here and try to push out the air and I'll see how that works. Oh, well I've left that fitting slightly loose by the way. Okay, key is on. Let's give it a little bump. It would be nice if I could see under there at the same time, but focus a little bit. All right, pull it up. Nothing. Oh, still nothing. There we go. All right, three bumps, and I got it. All right, so it didn't take much to push there out. So now I just gotta clean up my oil mess, and uh, well, and I got some brake cleaner down here to spray everything off, but. At least now okay, I know well, I got this job is completed. I got all my zip ties back in place. And one thing I like to do on my RV when I get something like this done is, of course, you see I got the, my 
this room is out. This is extended. So this will c retract all the way in. But this wall gets very close to these lines. So pull your room in, crawl back under your RV, make sure everything's set, blocked, so nothing can roll over you or anything. Uh, but then look, make sure nothing's rubbing or touching. Because I can remember, you see I got some extra straps here, because uh, some years ago I noticed that this this is my um, water line that runs back to my rear uh, heater that heats the RV on, on the, the, the rear part of it. But I noticed this was rubbing right here. And if I hadn't have caught that and pulled it back, eventually it would have wore a hole in it. And this pumps water continuously as you're driving down the road. This is your hot water from your, from your engine, from your water pump. So if I had wore a hole in it, I would have pumped out all my water and overheated the engine. And it could have been a bad day. But uh, that's why you got an RV. Get under there and look around, inspect, check. Always be looking for the next problem because it's just waiting for you. Have a great day. Hope that helps somebody.